are you saved? <laughs> That's what they'll ask you. And uh, I was looking for, I, are you saved? And I say, oh, <laughs> no, I hope I'm born again. I hope I'm a child of grace. Some, they'll say, are you a Christian? And I'll say, no, I hope I'm a child of God or, or a child of grace. I like to say that because Christian, and they turn on the news and these Christians have uh, killed all these people, you know, they use that in the news as a, uh, just throw it around. But I just like to say, you know, I believe that uh, I'm a child of grace. But here's what I want to do. I want to make a distinction between born again, born of the Father, say, of the Father, and uh, and being saved. They're going to confuse you. They're going to use all this saved stuff on you. Are you saved? How do you know you're saved? <laughs> and, and stuff like that. Are you 100% sure you're saved? 101%? <laughs> they don't leave any room for uh, 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 hope, you know. They don't even put a hope in there, you know. I hope I'm saved. Faith, hope, and love. I hope I'm one of God's people. Now, there's a salvation in this time world, brothers and sisters. But if you're a child of God, if you're one of his people, that he, one of his elect, one that he loves, you're going to be there in the world to come. When you leave this body, I don't know all the particulars, but when you die, uh, something's going to happen. Uh, you're going to be with the Lord. To be absent with the body, I believe, is to be present with the Lord. But anyway, I love this story. I just love it, love it, love it, because it, it, uh, it, it uh, it's an... It's an analogy Jesus uses in uh, Luke, uh, let's see, uh, 15 and uh, let's say 12. He said, uh, and a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods, of goods, give me time <laughs> to change the, play, the page, turn the page. I should have practiced this. <laughs> that falleth unto me, and he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into the field to feed swine. And he would have filled his belly with the husk of the swine. Did he? He ate the same thing the pigs were eating, and no man gave unto him. And when he had come to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father have bread enough to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. And am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Brothers and sisters, <laughs> this son was a son while he was dining with the swine, brothers and sisters. He was still a son, brothers and sisters. Born of the Father. Born of the Father. There's lots of God's people out there right now. Dining with the swine. Dining with the pigs. But they're still sons. They're still born from above. The saved thing and the conversion uh, may or may not happen to God's people in this, life, in this lifetime. Not everybody in the Old Testament had heard about Jesus. Uh, little babies. They don't... Uh, they, you know, what what do, they, what do babies do when they die in infancy? That if they're one of his, they go to be with Jesus. See them, see them brother and sister? I personally believe all of them are elect <laughs> that die in infancy, but that's another uh, <laughs> uh, question. But anyway, look at this, brother and sister. He said, we kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and no more worthy be called thy son. He's repentant. He's sorry for what he's done. Clay Brown says, you know, sometimes you get to the end of the rope. You get to, you know, you, you get out there and you see, you know, uh, <laughs> the world is not nothing out there in the world for you. But the father said to his servant, bring forth his best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand 
and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fatted calf, and kill him, and let us eat, and be merry. For this my son was dead, and is alive again, and was lost, and is found. And they began to make merry. <laughs> That's a beautiful, beautiful story, and it talks about the new birth. Brothers and sisters, this is the way it works. At God's appointed time, I don't let all these people out there when they're talking about they're on street corners and screaming at people, holding up big banners, telling them they're going, they're going to burn in fire. Well, uh, that's not true, brothers and sisters. At God's appointed time, everybody is born again in the same way. Everybody. The wind bore, bloweth where it listed. Even in John 3, John 3, he said, he told Nicodemus, Nicodemus said, how can a man be born again? He used that analogy to show you that you had nothing to say about your new, your uh, natural birth and you have nothing to say about the new birth. That's totally 100% 100 God, 100 God's prerogative. Look what he, he used as an analogy. The wind bloweth where it listeth. That's a, that shows you where, about the Holy Spirit. The wind blew the way of the thief on the cross, quickened him to eternal life. That's how everybody, so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Everyone is born again, brothers and sisters, in the same way. This is wonderful news if anybody out there is listening to me who thinks that uh, you've got to walk an aisle uh, or shake a hand with a preacher or a supposed preacher. But brothers and sisters, the gospel is glorious news that it's a finished word, what Jesus has done. And it's for a great multitude that no man can number, brother sisters. But I saw this right here about the 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 uh, uh, the he had compassion on him. That's the way you do with the son. I got son. I'm I got sons. They my sons. No matter what they do, what kind of trouble they get into, uh, uh, they're still my sons. And uh, well, I, I give. Did I give this a? Uh, let's see if I got a minute here. Anyway, I got in trouble at school one time. And uh, my dad had to get off work and come down there and talk to the principal. Uh, he wasn't proud of what I had done, but I was still his son. <laughs> I was still his son. He couldn't deny that. He, uh, you can deny. He says uh, he cannot deny his own brothers and sisters. God is faithful. He's not going to deny his children, I don't care what kind of trouble or what, what they do wrong in this lifetime. He's going to deal with uh, your, uh, uh, if you get him rebellious, he'll deal with it. He has all power of all flesh. Uh, all flesh, that means the goats and the sheep. He's got all power. But uh, anyway, I don't know why I got out here tonight. Maybe somebody needs to hear this. But uh, somebody's being tricked when people uh, they they on a mission impossible. Because somebody's in there, some pre some supposed preacher is telling his laws at gospel sake. That's not gospel. They're gonna read some pre some supposed preachers. All they can see when they look at the Bible, all they can see is the letter that kills. That's all they can see. <laughs> they can't see uh, they can't see the wonderful grace. Well, over there. The, uh, all they can see when they uh, about the uh, woman that was caught in adultery. All they can see is go and sin no more. That's all they read in that text. They never, they skip over where it says neither do I condemn thee. Neither do I condemn thee. She was caught in the act of adultery. She was guilty. But Jesus is God, and He can pardon whoever He wants to, and not condemn anybody that He wants to. See, brother, sister. So that's uh, that's what's going on right there. So some people look at the look at scripture, and all they see. Is a something to do. See, you got to do this. You got to do that. You know, they'll look way on TV and they point point at the camera. I love you all the time. They're they're giving you a something to do and putting it on your back. You know, you do this, do this, do that, and you're sitting there about to drown in uh, your uh, troubles, and they're just adding something to do. No brothers and sisters. God is a gracious God, and He has compassion on His children. He pities His children. Brother and sister, he pities his children. Slow to anger, even with his children, brother and sisters. Uh, anyway, I guess I'll get on out of here. I never did get to the other son. Uh, uh, people are trying to tend to be too hard on the other son, but he was a child of, of God too. The oldest son was a child. He was a faithful son. He didn't like it because they were throwing a party. But what did he say? It seemed like the, the, the prodigal did suffer some in this life.
because uh, maybe you haven't noticed this about it. It said, uh, let's say, let's say, uh, stop. Oh, I slow read. <laughs> My slow reading helped me over here because I noticed something about the older son. Seems like that, the, you know, maybe the, the, the unfaithful son suffered something in this life because, uh, look at here what it said. Uh, He's the the older son is complaining about you know you've done all this and I was faithful all these years and uh, and I never believed me I did what you said but uh, here you are having a party you know but he says it was right this is a proper thing to do now but what did he say right here listen to this I I lots of people just read right past this and he said unto him son thou art ever with me you're a faithful son and all that I have is thine you hear that all that I have is thine. In other words, he didn't uh, he didn't split it up again. He put the he put his older son in charge. It looked like the the younger son might have been working for the older, but his mind was right by then anyway. I'm sure he was. I'm sure his uh, uh, this is a hypothetical uh, situation, but I'm sure it's played itself out many many times in history. But uh, he uh, said, "All of that I have is thine." In other words. Uh, he didn't split it up again. He gave it to the, the older son to be in charge of, in my view. You know, so he suffered some loss. But just want to get on here and ponder and tell you what I was thinking. And I'm getting kind of quick on it. Uh, no brothers and sisters, the uh, supposed preachers get on television, TV preachers, and they'll point and they'll tell you they love you. And at the same time, they're giving you something to do. And uh, if you were a rounded man, they'd throw you an uh, anchor. <laughs> and that's what's really going on in America today because they have a something to do gospel and not a something done from the foundation of the earth gospel. <laughs> okay, well, I'll let y'all go to sleep. Uh, I just, I think I said everything I want to say. The prodigal son was a son nevertheless, even in the, in the, uh, in the, uh, uh, dining in with the swine. He was still the son. Peace and love from this old boy down here in Alabama.